I'm Professor Masood Sadiq. I'm a professor of pediatric cardiology and uh, currently dean uh, Institute of Child Health and Children's Hospital, Lahore, uh, Pakistan. Uh, my topic uh, of uh, today's talk was actually uh, issues and solutions to the device closure of atrial septal defect in adults with complex ASD. Now, this is a uh, very specific and pertinent topic in the sense that device closure now has become a standard of care when it comes to children and adolescents and adults. But it, when it comes to adults and elderly, particularly those who are above 50 or 60 years of age, it's still an issue which is uh, debated very much as whether we should be going first, uh, whether we should close them or not. And I think there's enough data now to say that we must close them. And second is, uh, what should be the evaluation and what are the issues related to that? I highlighted basically three, four major issues which are related to the uh, ASD closure in adults. One is to uh, look at the uh, size of the defect, uh, look at the uh, complexity of the defect in terms of margins, uh, intratal septum, uh, its mobility, uh, and so on. Second issue was the associated pulmonary hypertension, which is obviously an important issue in whether you're doing a child or an adult, but it's particularly so in adults. Uh, you should always uh, measure the PVR and then balloon occlude these defects and see what happens to the pulmonary artery pressure. And you will be surprised that a small subgroup of patients actually uh, do not drop their uh, pulmonary artery hypertension even after closure. And, and by doing this balloon occlusion testing for 15 to minutes to half an hour, you can easily separate out those patients who obviously would benefit from medical treatment. The third issue was the left ventricular dysfunction. We have to isolate these patients with uh, uh, restrictive physiology of left ventricle beforehand, and then obviously they also need to be uh, balloon occluded and seen what happens to their left atrial pressure and aortic pressures. If there's a sudden rise in LA pressure or an aortic pressure drops, you know you cannot close these defects. And in those patients, you need to precondition these patients by giving milrinone, dopamine, diurese them for a day or two. And then you will be surprised that majority of these patients, you would be able to close this, those ASDs subsequently a few days later. Uh, another issue which we uh, discussed was the uh, incidence of arrhythmias in these patients with, device uh, with a large complex uh, atrial septal defect. Uh, and the literature clearly shows that, uh, yes, if you do close them with surgery, the arrhythmias continue to persist and there is uh, still an ongoing risk of uh, arrhythmias, obviously related to pericardiotomy as well as scar tissue. But when it comes to device closure, there is a uh, there are small studies which indicate that actually you can close these defects and if there is no history of either paroxysmal or definitive atrial fibrillation or flutter beforehand, most of them will not develop them. Another important thing about arrhythmias is that most of the times you are actually able to control them better with medication and in long term you may be able to take them off medication as well. So in any patient with a large uh, ASD in an adult, uh, one has to think, look at the physiology of the ASD, uh, evaluate these patients uh, by echocardiography to see whether they are suitable or not, go ahead and catheterize these patients, and you need to have a complete hemodynamic assessment with measurement of PVR, balloon test occlude and see what happens to the pulmonary artery pressure and left atrial pressure, and only once you have actually excluded all the possibilities and have done a complete hemodynamic assessment, you should be uh, closing these ASTs. And I think as an interventional cardiologist, you always have that tendency to overreact. And now that we can close these ASTs in cath lab with so many maneuvers and methods and, and, and devices, uh, the tendency is to close them, uh, close, try and close each one of them. I think we have to think twice. It's not question whether you can close it or not. You should always question whether I should close it or not. And should I, and if the answer is that you shouldn't close it, then try not to close them. The only thing which I notice particularly about this meeting is that it's, it's, really, uh, it's really international. 
you see people coming from Middle East, you see people coming from Indian subcontinent, you see people coming from Japan, uh, Far East, and so you get this blend of experience from different regions of the world. And I think, uh, yes, you can read them in, 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 in the books, you can look at internet and find any information, but it's really talking to people, learning from their experience where you gain the most. You have questions in your mind which you really want to clarify, and only an expert of that particular area would be able to clarify those questions. So I think it's a very useful uh, meeting in that uh, perspective that you have this uh, uh, opportunity of uh, uh, getting people from all around the world with varied experience and uh, different difficulties and, and issues which can be discussed and, and, and uh, solutions be given.